everybody. Brian here from QuantLabs.net. Thank you very much for being part of uh, our software show here in C++. I don't want to spend too much time on the backstory of where things are at. Um, I just uh, about a month ago finished off um, my first strategy for Python uh, algorithmic trading. A um, couple of uh, my members are here. Appreciate that. Um, so we are going to be shifting gears in the programming language that I'm choosing to go with, uh, the ultimate language, which is of course C++. You realize a lot of you may not have the background, but uh, it's part of this webinar is to talk about that and uh, cover any issues or concerns that you may have, um, IDEs and so on and so forth, and some of the advantages with it. <clears throat> but um, let's talk about uh, the basics of C++. All right, now in C++, there's a lot of IDEs. Of course, I'm on a Macintosh, uh, Mac OS X here. And this is probably the most popular um, IDE, Integrated Development Environment for C++. It's called Xcode. Uh, if you've worked with Visual Studio, it's kind of on par with Xcode or with Visual Studio. The only difference is obviously is going to have some of the proprietariness of what Apple offers. Uh, for example, it does support C++ and the two proprietary languages that Apple uses for their iOS devices and uh, Mac OS X or what will soon be called Mac OS for the Macintosh operating system. So uh, those two languages, there's the older one that's kind of fading away called Objective-C and then there's a the new one which came out about a year ago which is uh, open source called uh, Swift and Swift is becoming very popular and in actual fact uh, apparently Swift is now used quite a bit in back-end processing because it is open source so it's uh, used in some Linux environments on top of that um, it's also uh, potentially going to be used as another option for Android uh, Google has uh, announced that they are looking at Swift as part of their one of their language options for um, for Android. So I think Swift will be a big language in the next few years. It's already the 14th most popular language out there um, according to Teob. But we won't, we're not here to talk about Swift. Anyways, um, let's talk about C++. So I got a, like I said, I've got a presentation here and uh, the first section I want to talk about is CMake. And what CMake is, is basically the um, utilities that you would use to build C++ programs uh, involving the C++ source files, the libraries, and I just want you to understand, I'm not here to teach you C++, um, but I'm just going to give you an overview of one of the ways I plan to distribute uh, future projects that <clears throat> I will develop in C++. And, C++, and CMake is, going to be, is probably one of the standard ways of distributing uh, C++. Now the cool thing about C++, it's a true cross-platform language, meaning that can be run on all major operating systems ranging from Linux, Mac OS X, and Windows. Uh, can, it's also uh, can be used for uh, embedding. And, <clears throat> and all, a lot of you may be out there interested in um, high-frequency trading. About 90% of all high HFT systems are written in C++ in Linux environments. So um, I've done the research on that, and all the new companies are using C++. So this is the standard way. And last fall, when I was looking around the job market, just as a test to see what's going on in the industry, uh, virtually all the jobs, first language they want is C++, and the second language is Python. So at that point, I decided to move out of .NET, move out of MATLAB, and just go full gear on what the industry is moving towards and has been using is Python and C++. So we are now going to be the first night tonight uh, talking about C++. So I'm going to stop right now. Has anybody got any questions on that C++ and what I've already talked about? And then I'll get into some CMake uh, demos for you and uh, some links. Okay, um, if there's no questions, uh, I want you to... Oh, um, so has got a question here from Vitaly. Where did you hear about Swift? <coughs> versus Android. Um, I'll have to pull that up for you um, later on, uh, Vital. If you can uh, give me a, uh, uh, a, uh, a reminder towards the end, and then I'll definitely uh, do a Google search for you on that, okay? Because uh, we want to just get this out of the way. 
Um, but there was a news item on one of the big uh, IT uh, sites. Like, uh, I think it was InfoWorld or one of those kind. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about this. All right, so uh, keep your eyes on the chat box. I'm going to be putting in these notes in here. So if you want to copy them, by all means. Uh, I'll also be putting these up on my meetup groups, uh, and my Facebook, and my blog as well. So I'll make this available. Uh, this video is being uh, recorded as we speak. Uh, let me just verify that. Yes, it is. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, just so everybody knows, we'll talk about this at the end, but this video that will be used as a playback will be up for a limited time, as among other things, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's talk about CMake. CMake, um, like I said, is a build system that is used in, uh, in C uh, and C++. So the first thing we want to take a look at is I've done a, quite a bit of intensive research for the last uh, two weeks on this. And the first link I want to introduce you to is I'm going to start putting this in the chat box if you want to capture those uh, links uh, by all means. So in here is the history of where I've come to today uh, and talking about both CMake and this software architecture that I want to introduce you to, which is pretty well my future architecture and roadmap for all my systems that I plan to build out using, um, I don't like to use the word high frequency trading. Uh, I know there's a lot of interest in it, uh, but we'll just call it high speed trading or uh, HFT light performance because there's no true HFT unless you're what I call dancing on registers and doing bid and ask spread. But I mean, that's beyond the beyond, but we'll just leave it for now, HFT light performance. So in here, uh, in this first link, is the overview of um, CMake. Now, there's some really good tutorials. This first one here, which I'll pull up in a minute, is uh, from this link here, I just put it in the chat box again, is here, is, um, uh, hang on here. Let me just pull up another browser here. Okay, so this is what CMake is, and this is an awesome tutorial on kind of introducing you into a hello world program in C++. It goes play by play, which is really good. Uh, supposedly assuming you are on Ubuntu uh, and it will show you how to from scratch work with CMake, how to install it, how to work with it. Um, it's really powerful, very good. We'll show you how to build out a, a C++ library. Uh, there's two types of libraries in C++. Um, there's a static dynamic library um, how to have a call a client a C++ uh, program to call a function in that library. So I, I would highly recommend you to go through this. Um, it's, it's a bit lengthy, but it will give you an amazing overview of what CMake does and, 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 and how it works and kind of like a 32,000 foot view of it. Okay, so once you get through that, <clears throat> the next step is um, to basically uh, like here's the confusing part about C++ and the operating systems. This, 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 this tutorial here is really important to understand. So um, what we're doing now is, I'm just going through my checklist here. This tutorial um, that I'm just put in the, the, the chat box again is really important. So depending upon your operating system and your choice of integrated development environment that you want to use for a, uh, a C++ project with CMake. Um, you can use it in, in Visual Studio for Windows, Xcode, which uh, I'll, be, I'll be using tonight. And then these two other ones, which are popular as well, uh, one called Eclipse CDT, uh, which is uh, C development tools, and then KDevelop, which is another open source um, IDE. Now, another one, there's, there's about seven in total, but another one that I've seen to like and that I've had few issues with one called code light um, this is open source it's free uh, and it works on all the major um, operating systems so I just updated the uh, chat box again um, so this one can be used uh, as well as um, uh, I'm just trying to think there's a couple other ones um, but the one the code light is the one I like so far there is a professional one called sea lion um, and the advantage with this one is, yes, you do pay for it, um, but you do get the support with it. And it, it, it is built around CMake projects. So 
the project that I'm about to uh, release tonight um, is built around CMake, and that's why I'm talking about it, because this is my hopeful way of being able to distribute uh, these C++ projects in whatever um, operating system you want on top of whatever uh, IDE you want to use. Okay, so <clears throat> we've covered both of those options. Uh, how do you use CMake um, using this link here I've given you? on top of the um, IDE tutorial as well, IDE integration or integrated development environment. Okay, let me just check my checklist. Um, okay, so we've talked about uh, some historical uses of it with, with my stuff in this link I've given you. Um, we've talked about the overall usage of it, giving you that link. Um, we've talked about the IDE options. Um, and as I said, I'll be using Xcode, and if you want some other recommended uh, IDEs, um, there's obviously Video Studio with Windows, and then uh, CodeLite, which is multi-platform, as well as CLion, which is a, a paid IDE. And then, of course, there is CMake itself. They have a utility, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then they just pull up another one. Okay, so CMake is obviously a big project. And um, what it is, is there's, there's software that you can download um, from, from CMake.org. And obviously, they have all the major platforms covered off, Mac, Windows, and Linux. Okay, So I'll show you the Mac version. Uh, just let me pull that up. All right, so here's the CMake project. And basically, how it works is you have a, uh, your source file or folder. Uh, where your uh, source files reside on top of um, a build directory which will put in all the what they call artifacts of your C project into this folder that's including your libraries your object files your bin or executable files um, and then you can keep keep your uh, source files separate from the build directory okay so I'm not going to get into a lot of details here because I've got the videos to show you and there's a ton and ton of tour tutorials that you can go over. But what I do want to show you is the um, configuration of, um, of, of CMake. So if I go in and configure it, um, I'm just going to create the folder. Now here's where it gets really interesting. You have all the different compilers that are available for C++. Um, so we're just going to use the standard, uh, what they call GCC, the new uh, C compiler. And um, I'm just going to click that one, the native. But here is, oh, no, let me just go back. I'm just going to use the default. Sorry about that. And uh, if I, uh, so it's going to generate all the necessary uh, files for my, um, for my project. And basically, all you got to do is, um, I uh, just wanted to generate a, so let me just try something here. There's another option I want to try out here. Okay, I'm going to just try something we're doing standard. Okay. Anyways, there's an option in there. I'll give you an option to create, <coughs> excuse me, uh, different IDE deployments. Um, but uh, the one tutorial that will show you how to do that is in one of the links I gave you where my IDE integration uh, and I'm here let's go back to my checklist uh, we want this one okay so I wanna, I've already shown you this link here but in CMake if I go into my terminal now all, all oh, oh, operating systems have a terminal so I could do a CMake here uh, and it has a command line uh, utility. But in here is uh, there, I'm going to show you just the Xcode version, uh, show you how quick and easy it is to create a, a CMake project for a specific type of IDE. Right in here, you see Mac OS 10. Here you just uh, do a, you're, these are the instructions that you would typically uh, provide CMake. Um, you make a subdirectory for your project. For your IDE, so in this case it'd be Xcode. You just navigate into it, and here's where it gets really cool. You could do a CMake hyphen capital G, and then the name of your IDE Xcode, 
and what it will do is it will create the project file needed for your IDE and therefore you'd be able to then load in out of box literally uh, your um, IDE so in that case I can then once that command is issued in my um, terminal I can then navigate and create uh, sorry automatically create a uh, IDE project file and then open that project file and then start uh, building out my um, uh, project C++ project within the IDE itself so in my case uh, Xcode and if you're using this utility here this CMake utility you would have options for CodeLite, KDevelop and all the other popular um, uh, IDE options that uh, you would have for your particular operating system. So in my case, you would have Xcode, CodeLite, KDevelop, and some other ones. So I just wanted to show you that, that it's pretty useful to, to have that. Okay, so that's all CMake. Um, does anybody have any questions on that regarding building systems for C++ using CMake? At all? Um, this is one of the ways I plan to distribute it, as I said. Anybody? No? Maybe? Who knows? Okay. Uh, let's address Vitaly's question about um, the Swift. I think a lot of you may know about um, uh, Swift. So if I do Swift, uh, Google, Android. Yeah, here you go. Uh, so it's just a simple search of uh, Vitaly. Um, Google may be considering Swift for use on Android, so um, and that's just the outcome of the uh, lawsuit with Oracle over Java, so I'll put that in there. So um, that is uh, obviously big news. A lot of people don't know that it was announced three months ago, so that is being um, considered. So if you want to check out that article, uh, please do. So if Swift is part of the Android ecosystem, I think it's gonna be a huge, huge deal because um, you know, outside of your WebKit uh, for Apple versus uh, Android, um, I, maybe obviously Google will have to develop their own uh, web toolkit for uh, the Android uh, well, platform. Okay, so there's that. Okay, um, so anybody got any questions about CMake or just generally C++? If not, let's get into the fun stuff. All right, so I'm going to be kind of summarizing everything for the last five and a bit years I've been at this. As I said, I've already mentioned that I've looked at many languages, R, MATLAB, C Sharp, pretty well the whole .NET, Realm, and um, the conclusion I've come to is C++ is definitely the language of choice when it comes to automated trading. Uh, it is not, it is, it can be a challenging language uh, to pick up, but uh, I plan to keep my project really simple. Uh, from what I understand, the pros do the same thing to keep their, their um, systems maintainable and so on and so forth. So that is obviously an important element that I'll have to uh, keep in mind. So the two things that I've been looking at over the years uh, in terms of uh, building out sophisticated high-speed trading systems is uh, virtually two areas that are important when it comes to automated trading is basically uh, databases and parallelization or, or multi-threading concurrency and that sort of thing very 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 important um, elements so let's talk about the first one Redis now you've probably heard about Hadoop, you've probably heard about Spark, and I've never tr never understood why uh, Redis, NoSQL, the database, is never considered as one of these options to deploy on. Now the thing is, it's open source, and it's written in C, and it's a really powerful database. I just want to give you um, a metric here, which is kind of eye popping. Now, in oops. Okay, I'll, I'll address that in a second here. Let me just talk about first the, um, the performance of Redis. <clears throat> now, when I say open source, Redis is pure, pure, um, oh, uh, pure open source. It's not like one of these freemium models where you get like, like, like a Mongo, where you get X amount of f functionality and you want the support, you want the documentation, you want some souped up features. Uh, 
do you have to pay for that? And those licenses are not cheap. And uh, here in Redis, it's all free. It's true, true open source. It's one of the real reasons why I love using this um, uh, database, I guess, in-memory database. Now, I want you to read this very carefully. Operations per second, 1.2 million using the Redis cloud cluster on Redis Labs, okay? When, okay, sorry, Esteban, I probably missed your question halfway. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume you mean Redis. If so, just confirm that. And when I say Redis, the, 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 the code base, yes, it's free. I'll show you the website. So if you go to redis.io, um, this is the website. Uh, I don't want to, again, teach you Redis. Uh, I'll, I'll cover that in a minute, but I've been eyeing this project for a couple of years now. But if you come under clients, it supports a lot of languages. Obviously, it covers my languages, C++, C, uh, Python, even R. There's one for MATLAB. I mean, it covers everything. A lot of other databases have limited options. So you might want to consider that. And again, you can download the source code. It's free. Get it on GitHub. But I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back to this in a minute. But the one that's really eye-popping is this 1.2 million operations per second. I don't know if you remember uh, a few years ago, we had a data, uh, a platform that was demonstrated to us by um, Deltix. Deltix is considered probably the world's premier uh, trading platform, bar none on the planet. I know a lot of the big banks use it here locally in Toronto. We have Bank of Nova Scotia using it. Some of the big hedge funds are using it, um, and it's a very powerful database. But part of that database had a database in it called Timebase. And the thing is, in that database, if you watch that demo, there was a lot of uh, bragging rights to see how that database was able to perform at 1 million transactions per second. So I just wanted to pull out this stat here to show that this, with Redis, now exceeds it. Okay, so... That's a pretty powerful um, statement, I guess. Uh, and that's using a, the clustering technology, which is part of Redis, and that's part of the um, Sentinel, which is, there's three versions of Redis uh, when you download it, and Sentinel is part of that clustering technology, just to give you uh, a general highlight. But the other cool thing, if you ever decide to go uh, cloud, you can use these guys, Redis Labs, uh, to host your Redis uh, install uh, locally on their servers with a cloud-like um, uh, a cloud-like uh, option. So that's a nice option, but it's not cheap. But um, it is there if you want. And of course, you get this type of performance of 1.2 million transactions. And uh, I'm not, but here are the the geeky details for you if you want to see how they perform that. And again, I'm just updating the chat box as we go. All right. <clears throat> so knowing all that. With Redis, um, I've put together over the years a playlist. Now, again, I'm not going to teach you. I just updated the chat box with this link to my uh, video playlist. I've got 30 videos showing you all the different ways you can use Redis. And this is a very high-performance database that you can use in, in memory. I've got both uh, confirmed uh, clients, both in Python and in C++, that are able to connect into it. And I'm going to show you the one using C++ tonight, OK? So Redis is very, very, very powerful. And again, it's true, true open source. It's free. That's the beautiful thing about it. So checking my, um, my uh, checklist, we've talked about the performance of 1.2 million uh, operations per second. i um, shown you my playlist. Now, one of the important things in Redis is uh, everyone's asking about, there's different design um, patterns when it comes to implementing Redis databases, uh, especially if they're in memory. Uh, one popular way is to use what they call publisher uh, subscriber, which is event driven. <clears throat> so in here I show an example of it uh, using C++ as the client connecting into my Redis and um, I show uh, how that's done and how it works. So I'll include that link again in the chat box. I have uh, got the video here, uh, or actually you can use that link I just provided, which the video here. And essentially what happens is, um, here's the scenario. 
This is again for high speed trading, high frequency trading like performance. If you have a connection coming into wherever you're connecting into with your market data provider, be it in my case, I've demonstrated using IkeyFeed, I've demonstrated using interactive brokers. What Redis provides you is what they call a message queue so that you can have your client, when the tick comes in, you can then push that tick, that market data tick on the queue into a Redis server instance. So because remember it's in memory, uh, that tick then gets stored internally within Redis. So I'll show you how that gets run. So this is an example of a Redis uh, server instance right here. So let me just pull that up. Uh, so all you gotta do is go Redis server. And I'll, I'll just give you a quick uh, highlight of, of connecting into uh, Redis um, the server. So if I put in Redis client, which is Redis CLI, you can see here I'm using the default port, or the, sorry, the default address. That's like the local host for a web server. And then the default um, port, which is 6379. So that's what we're just, everything's out of box. No fancy uh, configuration, but of course you can configure it in the config files. But I just want to show you the, the simple way to connect into it. Let's go ping, and then it responds with a palm. So this, <clears throat> this, this server is running. So if I go back and do a ping, it says it connect connect into Redis. So we know the Redis server uh, is up, and these two are talking. So this right here in the Redis client is the typical client. So you're going to have different client coding, uh, source code client projects that will connect into this Redis project, or sorry, this Redis server instance. And again, you can take one Redis server and connect them and chain them together and make a cluster out of it. And that is how uh, this Redis lab is able to get this type of performance of 1.2 million operations per second. So that's basically how it works, nuts and bolts of it. Let me just stop there. Anybody got any questions on Redis? Because I'm going to move on to the next section. Uh, anybody any questions so far on Redis? What I've shown? Again, this is all done in C. So let me just show you if you're interested in the source code. If you go to Google, uh, do GitHub Redis and I'll show you where you can get the data, the, the source code. Here it is, that's the source code right there. So if you want the source code, you can download it, build it, compile it, you're off to the races. With that, what I just shown you. So you can get your own version of Redis server and the Redis client and all that. So, you, you know, I've just given you the link to this source code project. <clears throat> okay, so that's the fun stuff of Redis. Now, where it gets kind of wonky, remember in here I showed you in the Redis uh, uh, website, under here, if you go under clients, we've got all these different languages that enable you to connect into the Redis server. Um, I've already mentioned C++, C, <clears throat> C Sharp if you want, Python, R, MATLAB, all the major, I guess you could use languages for trading, but virtually all languages you can get with Redis. That's the nice thing about it. So in C++, now let me just stop here. In one of my modules, in one of my courses, I've covered uh, as an optional for Redis. So if you come under Python, uh, hang on, let me just, there we go. You have all these different uh, projects that you can use to use as a wrapper or whatnot to connect into <coughs> uh, Python. Now the one I used was this one called PyRedis, and that I've confirmed it works. So I'm gonna show you now uh, the C++ one. So what we're talking about here, and this is where it gets really, actually, let me stop right there. There's one for C. Now remember Redis is written in C, and there's one called High Redis, okay? High Redis is the official client um, for all Redis. It's the most up-to-date, and it's written by the founder that wrote, High Red, uh, that wrote Redis. So this is the, the standard client. Okay, so if you're if you're got a C program, you want to talk to Redis. This is the one you'd use if you're using C as a client. But as I said, we're not using C. We're using C plus plus. So let me just go back to on the top here and go through the C plus plus. This is where it gets really hairy. 
took me uh, a couple of weeks to figure out which one to use because I've got, how many have I got here? got, I don't know, eight. Some are outdated. <clears throat> the one I went with is this one called Red Ox, okay? And I'm going to show you why. Basically, uh, if you come down here in this GitHub, you go through the instructions. There's some dependencies uh, that you need to build out locally on your system. And then you can uh, build the Red Ox library. And then from there, be able to um, use Redis uh, and, and within a C++ program. And basically what it's using is using C++, and then it's also using that high Redis that I just showed you as the a wrapper. But it also, you can see here, it's fast. Um, and the more important thing is, is that it enables you to have all the different design patterns I've covered or shown you and talked about. There's something called pipelining. That's very important. It's thread safe um, and uh, also has support for that publisher um, subscriber uh, pattern I talked about earlier right here. So this is what I'm referring to. So this this is already part of that high, uh, high or oh, sorry, Redox C++ client for Redis. Anybody, anybody, did I lose anybody there? But this is what I'm using. Okay, using Redox. And here's how it works within C++, okay? So <clears throat> the reason I like publisher subscriber, the pattern is for, for ticks, and specifically when it comes to, let's say, I don't like to use, well, let's say automated trading, high-speed trading. Let's say you get a tick that comes in. What you can do is you'll subscribe to your Redis, um, what they call collection, which is the equivalent of a table within Redis. And you subscribe to it. And you're listening to that uh, table or in, in the lingo of Redis, the collection of Redis. So you're subscribed to it. You're listening to it. You're 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 you're, you're, you're gonna do something when um, a, a change in that collection takes place. So what you're doing is you're subscribing to your collection. In this case, called Hello. And when there is something that happens, print out a message. So what we're doing here in this uh, loop here is now what we're going to do is we're going to start pushing data into our Redis um, to our Redis server because so I just want you to know we do connect into it right here. So we start pushing data into the Redis instance. So for every time we push a, a piece of data into Redis on the collection. Uh, called hello our subscriber right here is going to do something so this in our case for our trading system this is where your algorithm would reside so for the world of trading what we're doing here is we're we're gonna push data into our redis so that's essentially all we're really doing is when a tick comes in we're now going to push that data all the data that goes with the tick be it a bid and ask or if it's going to be an open, high, low, close, we can now push that data into Redis and then have another thread or something in C++ that will be listening and then do something. So we'll talk about that in more detail once we get into the world of, um, into the world of uh, TBB, Intel TBB, which is threading building blocks, which is the concurrency and multi-threading. Okay, so I just want to make sure everybody understands the concept that I'm using here of the publisher subscriber using Redis and why I'm using Redis and on top of that why I'm using C++. Okay, because this is the simplest, well not the simplest, but it's, it's the easiest to understand coding that I've seen compared to anything out there when it comes to high performance trading systems. And this seems to be also the most um, maintainable Okay, because once you start getting into the lower um, end of, we'll call I, I like to call it whacking in the weeds, the low latency stuff, um, on the bare bones of your operating system, uh, it can get pretty ugly on the coding front. But this is what I've seen is the easiest to pick up. Okay, so let me just do a recap here on Redis. So what we're doing here is we're using Redis. If you're interested to understand how I'm using Redis, I've given you the playlist here on my YouTube channel. 
Um, I've talked about the performance of Redis using this 1.2 million uh, transactions per second in a cluster within Redis 3.0. So that's, that's the version we're using. We're using the latest version of Redis. Okay, and then you can just check out this article to get clarification on that. And I've given you uh, that link in the chat box. And again, what I just talked about just earlier was the um, publisher subscriber example, as I explained here. It's the same code, basically, what I'm going to show you tonight. Esteban, I have no experience at all with this stuff. That's okay, Esteban. Um, we're covering all of this right now, and this is why we're doing this, to do a Q&A. And if there's any further um, uh, uh, detail that needs to come out of it, we can definitely cover it in future meetups. That's not a problem. All right? So... Um, this is a different level of programming, I understand that, but a lot of people want to move into high-speed trading, and this is probably the smartest way to do it. Kind of like, if you're new at it, go with Quantopian. We're using uh, uh, Python as well. We've also covered a couple of uh, modules over the last few months and building out uh, how to build a basic algorithmic trading system in Python. On top of that, I've given a, uh, a real-world example using uh, an equity pair trading strategy as well. So we've kind of covered all that. So we're now getting it to the next level, uh, just so you know and getting uh, that backstory for you. So hopefully uh, I haven't scared you off yet, but uh, let me know. We'll cover uh, any concerns you may have, Esteban, any, or anyone else out there. Okay. Um, so let's continue along. Anybody else got any questions on Redis so far? Uh, at all? No. Okay. So let's talk about um, Intel TBB. Let me just load up the uh, the uh, the website TBB. Okay, so this is obviously from Intel. Uh, this is one of their few uh, open source projects that they maintain. Now, just to give you a little backstory, there's different um, Intel projects out there that are open source for currency or multi-threading or um, for uh, basically when you are doing something on it, basically what a thread is, is if you're doing something on a computer, uh, let's say a good example is uh, I open up this terminal or actually, let me just show you a better example. This is Linux, okay? So we, we've got a, a terminal open. Now, this is like Linux. If I go PSEF grep, uh, or um, I think I can't remember. Uh, let me just do this. Okay, so EF, each one of these that you see right here is a thread. This is the process ID, and this is the actual service that's being run on my Mac currently right now. Um, so each, every, every computer that's turned on is running various threads, and each one of these is a thread. So you can see here I've got my screen flow running, this video I'm recording right now, um, and that's a separate process, so that would be considered a thread. Okay, so you can see the number of threads I'm running on this system. And that's what threads are. So what we're talking about here is a multi-threaded library for C++. And C++ and any of the more higher-end languages, um, namely Java, C Sharp, C++, some other newer languages uh, do have multi-threading uh, capabilities. So one of the more powerful libraries for C++ and multi-threading is this one called uh, TBB or th uh, Threading Building Blocks. Okay, so introducing that, why am I um, talking about it? All right, so again, there's in the world of programming, there's different patterns. Uh, I've already talked about one of them in Redis uh, called uh, the publisher, publisher subscriber I've already talked about. So that's probably one of the design patterns I'd like to use within uh, the world of Redis. So in this case, using <clears throat> Intel TBB, I'm deciding to go with uh, this one called flow graph, which is a pattern. So the concept of graphs, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I'll give you the uh, links so you can understand it, but I'll give you the general gist of it. In the world of Goldman Sachs, um, 
they have an internal database called SecDB. Now this database is very important uh, to, to Goldman Sachs among other technologies, but this database is so important to them. It's internal and it's every trade that is traded within Goldman Sachs has to be passed through this database for risk, analysis, portfolio, optimization, and nothing gets traded until that trade is traded through the database. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some links here about that. Well, two of them are on my own website, but I'm gonna show you one that I found on Y Combinator um, for the startup guys. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you an example here. Now, this is nitty gritty stuff I realize. Oh, <clears throat> let me just pull, no, we want this one. All right. Okay. So basically what it is is, um, as I said here, it's a Goldman Sachs internal language called slang slash secdb. Slang is a proprietary language using secdb, which is a database. But you can see here it's uh, event-driven. Uh, it is also multi-core, multi-threaded, no different. Um, and also it's built around this thing called graphs. That's a pattern that you can use for your databases. And here, if you look at this, we're talking about push and pull. So the combined libraries I'm showing you, and I've already talked about here in Redis, is about pushing data into Redis, uh, where is my example right here. I've talked about it, the publisher subscriber. So again, what we're doing in this case, we're pushing data into Redis. So this link confirms that we're kind of in the same path as the SecDB, combined between Redis and this Intel TBB I'm about to show you. Now, I just want to stress the importance of SecDB for Goldman Sachs is if they didn't have SecDB, it's commonly known that Realistically, Goldman Sachs wouldn't be here today during the 2008-2009 meltdown. One of the big reasons why a lot of banks or quite a number of banks went under because they didn't have the proper risk um, uh, risk uh, management. And the key behind this database is exactly that, to provide an enterprise level risk management. And this is um, the key behind it that's enabled uh, Goldman Sachs to prosper. And survive. So I just want to mention that, but the link here is I want you to understand that it's using this reactive graph business. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is exactly that what a graph is. It's a different type of uh, pattern you can use in databases. So essentially, what we're dealing here is uh, in TBB, we've got this. Uh, uh, flow graph pattern and I've got some details I've, I've uh, included here um, here I'll put in the chat box again okay so in the chat box here if you go into the flow graph there's all these different um, types of patterns that you can use the pattern we're going to focus on is this one loop parallel execution so I got a better uh, zoomed in version of it. So essentially how it works is uh, combined with Redis, this is how it's going to work. We have our data come in, our live market data, okay? And that could be a tick, that could be uh, high speed. Uh, uh, no, maybe a lot of you don't know, but I've experimented a lot in the world of um, IQ feed, and I've seen um, instances of basically 300 ticks per second on just one asset. And when you have 100 assets that you're watching, you will need something that's able to keep up. So in this block A, this is the part that will, what I like to call sucking in that data. And it's basically processed through multi-threading, which again, remember, are these little guys that I mentioned here using this PS slash, uh, or sorry, PS minus EF command. So all of these little guys that you see on this system, each one of these 
is a process better known as a thread in the world of programming. Okay, everybody so far with me? I'm going to stop right now. Does anybody get any questions so far on what I'm showing at all? Um, I don't know if this is too technical, but uh, once you start getting into this world of high-speed trading, uh, nothing's easy, but I'm trying to uh, simplify as much as I can. If not, I'll continue. Okay, so basically how a lot of high-speed trading systems, including high-frequency fre trading works, which is similar, you get your data, and in here, in this B and C blocks, are your algorithms. Now, you're going to have various algorithms running in parallel, and they're going to be multi-threaded while they read in this block of data, your, your ticks. So you can have 10 algorithms, you can have 20, maybe even have 100 algorithms running in parallel. This is what is going to maintain all those threads. This is TBB threading building blocks. So that's what's going to maintain all that. In this case, we're going to simplify it. Here's one algorithm, let's call it, and another algorithm in, in B. But as you build out more sophisticated algorithms, you're going to have multiple um, like other algorithms within this block. And each block, the C and B, are called nodes. Now, if you've seen my fast flow um, library playlist, which is equivalent of TBB, it's the same thing. These are nodes, these are workers, these blocks. The terminology is different, but it means the same. So essentially, think of this block as, as an algorithm. This block may be um, another algorithm. So when I'm saying algorithms, what I'm referring to are things like summarizing, averaging. Um, maybe you've got another algorithm that will uh, check on the portfolio optimization or portfolio weighting. You may have another algorithm that may check uh, some risk assessment or risk measurement of some kind. So you can put all of these simple algorithms in each one of these blocks. And then as I said, you can paralyze them. Hopefully that's clear understanding this concept of using this flow graph. And that's basically what it does. So if you're running, let's say in this case, two algorithms, you're going to get some kind of result. So you're going to join these two results together, and that's what this D does. So you're going to have D uh, combining all these results of each algorithm somehow, and you're going to have another calculation made of some kind. Maybe you do it a, weight, a weighting, and you hit a certain trigger point that you can then use as an entry point into the market. So you can use this, this little basic system as a way to measure your entry, okay? And that's pretty pretty important because um, this is basically how it's done in pretty well all the major retail trading platforms, be it MetaTrader and or uh, TradeStation, uh, NinjaTrader, any of them run pretty well in the same way. Okay? So <clears throat> that's pretty important to understand that. Now, does anybody have any questions on that so far? Or I just know we've got a couple people just joining us. Appreciate you joining. Um, anybody have any questions so far? No? Okay. So I'm hoping you keep in track of the uh, links I'm providing in the chat box. If not, don't forget, I'll, I'll include this uh, maybe as a document or as a something I'll provide to you on the meetups or my blog or my Facebook. We'll talk about that in a minute, like in, in a couple of minutes. Follow up. <clears throat> okay, so we've talked about um, Intel trading building blocks, or threading building blocks, sorry, and uh, the benefits of using this. Uh, something similar in a real world example Goldman Sachs, SecDB, um, and so on and so forth. So, one of the big uh, bonuses, we'll call it, is um, Intel has this thing called, uh, let me just pull it up here. Um, it's a, a TBB flow graph designer, okay? This will only run on EGAD's Windows, but it's open, I don't think it's open source, but it's free. Okay, this is really powerful, because now what you can do, I'm gonna give you the link here, is you're able to basically run 
Uh, this utility, I'll show you an example of it. So I've got a link on that. I made a video as usual. I like to do my videos the best way I can demonstrate things. I'm just giving a second here, let it load up. Okay, today would be nice. There we go. Alright, so here's some information on uh, the designer. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, let's focus on this one right here. Let me just make sure. Um, no, sorry, I loaded up the wrong link here. My apologies. Okay, let me just pull up this link. Okay. Yikes, I'm not having a good day tonight. Ah! Not doing too well. All right, here we go. Okay, so what we're talking about is this designer, the flow graph designer. This is really, really cool. Now, if you watch this video here, this is this is the actual one of the screenshots of it. Is essentially you see here the little patterns that you can have. You can visually create those. Uh, when I say visually, like drag and drop. And out of that, you're able to then code generate from from that, and it'll build out all your boilerplate code for you, um, so that you can build out multi-threaded um, processes or programs, basically, from this. And it's very, very powerful. So going back to that diagram that I showed you, here we have two workers or two nodes. Um, so you could have, let's say, 20, 30. You could design it with this and also um, co-generate it into C++. On top of, it gives you performance metrics as well. So you may want to watch this video, but on the unfortunate part of the problem is only runs on Windows. So I just want to highlight that to you. I, I was like really shocked when I saw that. I mean, even Fastflow doesn't have anything like this. And again, this is all free with what um, Intel provides. So that's that. Okay, so I'm going to stop. Let's do a recap on Intel TBB. We've talked about Redis and the benefits of using Redis. We've talked about the flow graph pattern. Uh, showed you uh, some of the uh, examples that uh, could be similar uh, with what uh, Goldman Sachs uses, the SecDB. Got some links here, provide you this link on Y Combinator. Uh, giving you this link here, uh, the details of TBB, um, the flow graph. Talked about in detail this graph here. And we just talked about this utility uh, to design it and then co-generate into uh, C++ with it. So anybody have any questions so far with what I've shown? Because now I'm going to show you my project. Merging these two frameworks, Redis on top of the uh, TBB. All right, so as you can see, I'm, 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 anybody got any questions at all? Uh, before I proceed and show you the actual source code to my project, this is the architecture, the blueprint or roadmap that I plan to use for my trading systems uh, in C++. Okay, um, let me just show you an example of something. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just skip ahead in a minute. Now, thanks Aiden. Uh, for the implementation is key. Yeah, I'm just trying to simplify it. It's not easy to pick up, but as you know, we, you know, I tried my best to keep everybody up to date um, as best as I can. But I'm going to show you an example similar to what I'm showing you here. Now, I, I talked about MetaTrader. Um, you know, I like MetaTrader, the platform. I just don't like the brokers that are associated with MetaTrader. <laughs> Sorry about that. But MetaTrader uh, is a cool platform for Forex. And I just want to show you some examples here. Um, there's two versions of MetaTrader, MQL 4 and 5. I'm going to talk about 5. Um, with the initial design of MQL 5, it was supposed to be as similar and as close as they can get to C++ as possible. Now, part of the cool factor of MetaTrader is they have these things called indicators. 
Now, if you look at indicators, um, it's, it's pretty phenomenal, the community, and uh, it's really cool. So I'm just going to show you an example of this. So here's all your indicators available for MetaTrader 5 written in MQL5. So we here have here, these are all technical analysis based. Some of them are pretty valid. Um, so we've got Harami, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm going to show you one of them. I'm going to show you the most popular one. This one right here called Volume Weighted Moving Average. So if I show you the source code under View, we have here MQ5, MQ5. The, the, this programming language is very similar to C++. That's why MQ5 was designed. But if you somehow reverse engineer the logic, you can easily um, apply this, specifically when it comes right down to the algorithms. And this is what we're talking about right here, the data. So we want volume, tick volume, close, low, high, open, all that necessary stuff, correct? And when you go down further, you'll see how all that stuff comes together with the looping, how it's all compiled, not compiled, wrong word, how it's, how it's developed, <laughs> and how all those algorithms are processed to generate some kind of result. So this is pretty, pretty fancy dancy stuff that you can take this logic and then drop it into exactly this. So each indicator that you create could be considered a separate algorithm. So you have volume weighted as one, maybe uh, another one similar to, uh, let me see here. Oh, I'm not doing too good here. Let me just pull that up, MQL5. So what I'm saying essentially here is if you go under the code base, and you're dealing with indicators, okay? Each one of these indicators can be separated as a separate node or a separate worker, as I just shown you, that can be dropped here or here, in block B or C. And then they can be paralyzed together to get you a result, and then your end result can be here, so you can put on your position, okay? That's why I'm taking this approach but your algorithm is going to be much, much simpler than something coming out of the world of MetaTrader. But just as an example, so you can get a better handle of what I'm talking about. Anybody have any questions on that? Now, let me show you another example. Uh, maybe some of you, maybe some of you don't know a person by the name of Shalom. He's been sending me some really cool uh, examples of uh, research papers. Uh, so let me just pull one up. Right here. Now, in this case, I just posted this this morning. Uh, this is a typical research paper, but now we're moving into the world of, call it quant. <laughs> now, again, this is getting all advanced, but I'm trying to keep it simple. But I'm just trying to give you an idea where I'm going with this. So if you come in here, uh, there's this uh, slide share. So let me um, pull that up. Give you the link here if you want. I, again, I just posted this this morning. This is a typical research paper that you'd get from a university or some kind of professor or some kind of real world quant guy. You go through it, blah, 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 it does this spiel on, on the history of it, and then you get into the mathematical parts here. Your algorithms reside right here. Your delta equals two times spread times volatility, blah, blah, blah. So each one of these, again, could be considered, a, could be put into one of these blocks. And you see here, there's th tiny, like dozens and dozens of them. Um, so maybe this model may have, who knows, six, seven algorithms that you would need to run in parallel to make that algorithm happen. So again, it's a, this, this design is very universal. No, don't forget that, you have to worry about when you use this kind of research paper, then you have to worry about the database, how do you handle it, how do you, how do you get the data source, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's where Redis comes in because that's your repository and where you hold the data. So that's why I merge these two projects or these two frameworks together into one using C++. So that's where I'm gonna now take in the Xcode project. 
Now again, I think we talked about Xcode already. This is uh, Apple's, uh, basically their own proprietary IDE, Integrated Development Environment, from Apple for Mac OS X. Supports Swift, we've talked about that, the language, and it also supports C++. This project is very simple. Well, I shouldn't say simple, but it took me a while to get to, to this stage. Now, I'm not going to do a walkthrough of it, um, but while I will run it. It doesn't do a whole lot, but to merge this project with TBB, Intel Threading Building Blocks, with the Redis wrapper that we talked about. Um, where are we? So much stuff I've talked about already. Um, we've talked about Redis, and then we talked about the C++ and C clients. Hopefully everybody remembers that here. This one we mentioned called Redox. This is the C++ one. We've talked about the this important right down here, this publisher subscriber model or pattern that I'm using. I'm implementing that <clears throat> right into this coding project right here. Okay, so you can see here, um, I've got the, the subscriber code, I've got the publisher code somewhere in there, and on top of that, what it does, essentially, is we are going to um, paralyze our, our algorithms, and the two algorithms that we're using are really stupid easy, is uh, we're going to do a square, and we're going to do a cube. So essentially what I'm planning to do, I'm just going to demonstrate it, is one of these would be a square, this worker will call it, node, and then this one would be the cube, let's call it. So we're going to do a push of the data from Redis, which could be represented tick, push it into both algorithms that are running in parallel, a cube and a squared, and then give you a result. Now that result, the other end, is where you make that decision if you're going to put on a position or not correct? And then when you do that, um, that enables you to run, as I said, all these different algorithms on top of if you wanted to run some risk management ones, some risk assessment ones, and even portfolio ones, you can do all that using uh, this pattern and using this code base in C++ as a roadmap to help you out. On top of that, if you really get sophisticated um, I've already mentioned it, um, that design tool, this guy, you can also, that will help as well. Okay, so essentially what this project enables, it has all two, L, all, all frameworks. It has the Redis, and also has the TBB built in. So let me just run it for you. Okay, first, you, and I've, I've always hinted that you've always got to make sure <clears throat> you've got your Redis uh, server running in the background, because this program that I'm about to show you connects into it. No different than I showed you with the client code, connects into it, but we're using C++. And again, as a reminder, we're using uh, this project here, this Redox, as part of that C++ project, which I'm about to show you, which includes using this publisher subscriber pattern. So let me just run it and let, I'll show you what it does. So it doesn't look like it does a lot, but basically what it's doing is <clears throat> it's simulating uh, some random number generation. I think it's a thousand. And what each one would typically represent, so in this case we're doing it with IBM. So again, it's all simulated, it's all random, is a price uh, of s between, I think, $95 and $105. And it's all random. And it pushes it into Redis, as you can see what it does here. And then at the same time, once it's pushing into Redis, it takes that, puts it on the message queue that Redis is maintaining, and then at the same time, you can run the, the cubing and squaring routines and doing the summarization all at once in the background. Now remember, I'm running this on a Mac system, and I mean, it's just a, a Pentium, I think it's a dual core, but Using this, if you ran this in a GPU environment or even with a higher end server, call it uh, a quad core, maybe you have 64 uh, thread cap uh, threads that could be concurrently run, this would be a very sophisticated uh, architecture that you could use um, to be able to build out 
a complete trading system with analytics and your algorithms running in parallel uh, on top of that processor or a series of processors or bas basically a motherboard if you have a higher end server. And <clears throat> again, um, because it's C++, you'd want to run this in, a, in, a, in a, a Linux environment or better yet, ultimately if you have the technical chops, go with a, a BSD um, operating system like FreeBSD that will remove all the um, processes that will take out the extra latency that will slow down a system. As in here, all these multiple threads that are running in the background, if you choose to deploy on a free BSD, let's say, um, <clears throat> which is true pure Linux, uh, not, not Linux, but pure Unix, it strips out all the unnecessary processes that you don't need. So again, that will maximize and obviously optimize your performance of the source code. So <clears throat> even though it's a simple demo, I just want to show you that it's very scalable. Um, you can easily add in extra algorithms using this methodology that I put together. And uh, here's your algorithms. So you want to keep these little guys really small. Okay, the smaller the better, the less processing that gets chewed up. So what I'm referring to is let's say two algorithms. You have one algorithm that takes two seconds. This, let's say B takes two seconds to run and C takes one second to run. Well, guess what? Your C is going to be waiting for B, even though C can get done in a second, but B takes two seconds to process, it's still going to wait for B to, to run and complete finish. Hey, HB, it's going to mute you, your background noise, hang on. All right, so continuing along. So you've got to be very aware of that. Um, so you want to keep your, um, your algorithms as tight as possible and as small as possible. And a good example of that is that research paper that I showed you um, in here. So if you can keep your algorithms maybe, maybe as big as that, where you have maybe three operations, two operations, nothing beyond that. Like this, I wouldn't run. <laughs> not, in one, not in one node. Maybe if you could break it up, definitely, you could definitely do that. But... Um, it's a roadmap that you can use as an example to streamline your code in a multi-thread environment using C++ on top of with Redis. And it's, it's a powerful combination if you ask me. Uh, going back to the code and Xcode. So that's basically the code in a nutshell, even though I've given you a long background of it. Okay, so let me... Um, uh, take some questions. Who's got some questions? And then I'll show you how we can um, proceed and get in the code. Anybody got any questions so far? I know we got up to 10 people. I think a lot of you are uh, members. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, just so everybody knows, uh, I'll, I'll mention this in the next little bit. But anybody got any questions on the project that I've just demonstrated? Any of the technologies or frameworks or libraries that I've demonstrated specific to... Um, to uh, basically either Redis or Intel TBB. I'm not sure if this is too complicated for people or too easy for people. I'm not sure. But let me know. Okay. So if there are no questions, let me talk about how to get the code. Okay. Um, I've been running... Oh, definitely not easy. I agree, Hayden. Um, that's why... Um, we're going to cover a lot of this down the line, um, but we are getting into lower latency stuff, and this is as complicated as it gets. Now, this, um, now Hayden's part of this group, which I want to talk about. Back in the day, I, I launched a, a course series um, called uh, Building Out an in Integrated... Hey, Chen, how you doing? Chen C... Hey, hi. Hey, how you doing, man? <coughs> Welcome, man. Okay, so um, essentially, I'll give you the link here if you want. <clears throat> Back in March, I launched this course, uh, building out a basic trading system, algorithmic trading system, all done in Python. So initially, what I've done is I've broken it out into separate phases. We've got here, uh, there's videos. I just gave you the link in the chat box. Um, 
so in here, what, what I've done is I've given you intro to my Python Algo training course series. It's like an entire video presentation that I've given. On top of, <clears throat> I've given out the different phases um, that, I'm, that I've been talking about. So the first phase is basically the entire components that you would need for a, a, a live training system done in Python. And this includes, again, the database. We were using Mongo there. Uh, all the charting, uh, what else is there? The inter interactive brokers, interfacing with that, using the Trader Workstation as your trading broker, um, and some other items. So we've covered that off. And then the second phase is our first kind of real world trading strategy using the equity uh, pair trading or arbitrage. Now I just removed this, um, I haven't really yet moved, removed the code but it's still there, um, but it's going to get removed very, very soon. <laughs> and basically what it is an entire strategy again, where you can build upon this phase here um, for an entire system built in Python. And then this one is just an example of a real world strategy that you could use for obviously equities, be it stocks, be it mutual funds, uh, Ecology ETFs, indices, whatever you want. It's all here in this in this in this in this uh, phase. So all the co source code has been provided, but now we're moving into a new phase, basically focusing on uh, futures and options. And here's where it gets complicated. I mean, trading futures and options isn't. I mean, it's not complicated, but I'm keeping everything as simple as I can, but the coding can get complicated. In here, what we've got is um, the trading mechanisms that you would need for a fundamental, fundamental analysis, very simple stuff, mathematically speaking, I should say, that's built around futures and options. So I've got a video here somewhere in here that goes over that. And I'm actually gonna start this course up in the next few weeks. And we're gonna be doing that on Monday nights, no different than these two phases that we've already covered off. This one has video playbacks of all those recorded sessions. Uh, as I said, we're removing this. And then that takes me into the next step. Now, when we're looking at futures and options, what we're doing is we are um, combining slow moving strategies and fast moving strategies. And what we're talking about tonight in C++ is for the fast moving strategies. And I've already put up a video on that. I'm not going to get into that in great detail, but just remember what a lot of the, the, the trading shops, the HFT shops are doing, is they have um, two core sets that they're always after, C++ developers and Python. And Python is usually either done with a prototyping to develop new trading models uh, or used for risk analysis or risk management is all done in Python. But when it comes down to the actual execution and the actual retrieving of data, it's all done in C++ at a high speed level. And again, I've already talked about it. It's kind of, we'll call it high speed trading, HFT like or high frequency trading like, but you're not gonna get true high frequency trading with these kind of projects, but it's gonna get it as close as you can in a easier to understand coding methodology. Now remember this is pretty daunting I realize. So what's been happening is um, as I've been rolling this out this phase here um, this strategy the very first one I mentioned the arbitrage pair trading I started realizing this is pretty valuable and it's pretty sensitive and I've maintained to this group that I've been part of it um, that I'm always all about trading edge. So that's one of the big reasons why I removed it because now maybe six people have it, or maybe 10, 20, uh, have a copy of it and all the videos that go with it. Um, so what's happening tonight, you guys are out of how many, we got 10 people, including myself. You're now getting a better idea of how this little coding project is gonna be used as my roadmap and as my architecture moving forward as I move into C++, but at the same time, providing uh, Python algorithms as well for this futures and options uh, phase. 
There's going to be two versions. There's going to be one for C++, and there's going to be one for uh, Python. And um, this code that I'm showing tonight is the basis that you would use if you decided to move into um, like, like an HMT kind of environment, a high-speed trading environment, using C++ in a preferred Linux environment. And if you really want to get fancy, preferably in a free BSD environment. But a lot of people go, well, I want to get there now, but I keep saying, you got to hold off until you get an actual trading system built out. Because, again, we've already covered this, that with C++, this is true, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it true cross-platform, meaning that you can use this across all the major operating systems. But as I said, you want to keep it in Linux and in, um, in, or preferably in BSD. And when I say BSD, that's pure, pure, pure Unix, kind of like HP Unix or like, or digital DEC Unix. And um, a lot of the higher uh, frequency trading systems are written on those kind of operating systems. So here's how it goes. We've got the coding base. I'm going to put it up tonight. Um, I'm going to put it as part of my membership for my Quant Elite. But here's the thing. I'm only going to put it up for 24 hours. Hopefully you've maybe be on my email list. I've been kind of leading up to that over the last I don't know, week or so. So I'm going to put it up tonight. I'm going to keep it up till tomorrow night and then everything's removed um, including this video playback and the reason I'm doing that is because again it's all about Trader's Edge um, I'm not about to put out all this out in the open in terms of creating open source uh, projects out of this um, but at the same time I want to make my code available to those that you know along the way have supported me uh, I guess I hate to say it financially, and I want to make it fair to them to get access to this because um, some may know, some may not know. All this stuff in terms of the trading, uh, education, specifically around platforms. I've been doing it for five years. When I started, there was literally nobody in this space. Now we got the likes of Quantopian, we got the likes of Quant Connect. I'm not saying that these are bad services, they're phenomenally good at what they do. But what's happening is, is now bringing out a generation of traders, automated traders, that still don't know what they're doing. Okay, and a lot of these people that join these services are going to have problems. It's going to be no different than where we are today, with, where retail traders are getting left behind because of automation. Okay, I've, I've put up a couple of articles on that already, and I'll put up some emails on that, where if you look at the top performing hedge funds out there the top performing hedge funds a good quarter of them maybe even up to a third top performing are all systematic or computerized hedge funds or also driven by quant so there is this big surge now where all the retail traders all the old school trading methodologies falling by the wayside i've been known i've known about this for many years but it's starting to take hold now and, and you're starting to see in the top performing hedge funds now, because of that, and where I started, I didn't envision to be where I am today with the likes of Quant Connect and Quantopian and other ones, a whole slew of them. There's now this mentality where everybody wants everything for free. And that's fine. I get that. But as I move out in the next five to six months, I'm going to be getting out of that entire business. So what you're going to find, what I'm doing is I'm moving into data analytics, meaning I've lost many eight, nine digit traders that are actively trading that do not understand this technology and I've lost many, many, many of them. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna move into data analytics and providing a service of trading signals of a eventual system that I'm running to run my own portfolio and building a whole community around that. Okay, so we're gonna talk about trading reports, trading signals, blah, 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 blah. And it's basically pure analytics for, for active traders. So I'm getting out of this educational business and the trading platforms. So that is why this project that you're seeing right here in C++ is up for a very limited time. Again, it's 24 hours till tomorrow night. So that's what I'm making available. And in order to get that source code, 
Um, to be fair to everybody that's already kind of invested in it, um, you know, we're going to now make everybody uh, to get it is to become a, a Quant Elite member. I'll give you the links here for that. Um, so in order to get this source code, I'll provide all the links uh, when I'm ready, um, which will be later tonight. I'll also put up this video playback. And I'll do an email blast on this video that I'll put up tonight. I'll put up a blast about the code is available, and you can come and get it. And uh, I'll provide the link where you can get it as part of the membership. And uh, I'll keep that code up again till tomorrow night for about 24 hours. Okay, so that's the big reason why I'm keeping the code up only for that small window of time. Okay, so people like you that have shown up. Most people that show up tonight are my hardcore followers, so I'm making this code available to you guys. There's no women on here, I assume. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd say ladies, too. Um, so I'm keeping everybody in the loop. I'm going to make this code available to be free. Not free, but I'm going to make it available to you guys that want it, and then we can use that as a roadmap uh, moving out with all these um, algorithms, these more advanced algorithms a year from now, and you can use this as a roadmap for yourself. Okay? And again, we've talked about the benefit of the Redis. We've talked about the benefit of using Intel TBB. We've talked about um, the flow graph pattern and all that. So it's all here. If you want to watch it, please watch this video again to get better understanding of it. Um, in the chat box here, I've put in all the links. I've got tons and tons of links of more detail uh, and better examples. So, you know, I'll say take your time to go through it. But if you are ready and interested, come and get it. Um, and uh, that's about it for my end. So that's how I'm making the code available. I'll put the link in here if you're interested in the Quant Elite. Um, for all you guys that are members, I'll provide the link already. Um, hopefully everybody knows. I'll actually, there's two ways to get it if you're already a member. We've talked about our, um, what I call the quick notice bar. This little thing you see in red here at the top where it says C++ HFT, that's for tonight. Read more. I'll actually put another one up for 24 hours and I'll put it up and I'll point you to the link to take you to where the code, the code will be. Okay. And um, you can download it. Now I'll also put in the, um, the CMake uh, version of that so you can import that into your IDE. And if you're on Mac, I'll also include my Xcode project as well. Now, if people are having um, issues with that, I can definitely provide uh, a specific version of this code uh, built around something like, I think, I know we've talked with somebody already for um, CodeLite. Um, we can also maybe use another IDE, like a C-Lion. That's a paid IDE. So I can make that available later on and, and, and make it easier for everybody. All right. So I'm going to shut up now. Uh, does anybody have any questions on that? And again, uh, keep, keep your eyes peeled on your email inbox um, if you are on my list. Now, I know some of you may be coming through my Facebook. You may not know about how to join my email list. I'll give you a, the best way to do it. If you just come to quantlabs.net, uh, what you'll get virtually, you shouldn't be able to miss it. You'll get this pop up here. Um, you can just type in your name and your email. I don't release any of that information and that will add you to my email list. So you'll get that email later tonight. Uh, another way to do it is the membership uh, contact form here. I'll give you the link there and you can just add in your info here and here and submit it and you'll be able to subscribe that way as well. So um, that's for anybody coming through my meetup or through my um, Facebook groups. So that's pretty well it. Um, does anybody have any uh, questions or want me to go over anything again in details and try to rework it in a way so people can get a better handle or understanding of anything I've talked about? Or if anybody's got any questions at all? Um, I think outside of Esteban, he's... I think... Uh, yeah, anybody else got any questions? Anybody? Just looking for any questions at all? Okay, so uh, what I'll do is I can do an entire recap of tonight. Um, thanks, Vitaly. Uh, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, uh, well, let's go over the recap if you want. Um, I realize that this may be a technical challenge for a lot of people. Um, but uh, as I said, I'm moving fast and furious in my data analytics service, so I'll be keeping this uh, up for, as I said, a limited uh, time. So what I've introduced tonight, and any time you can jump in with a question in the chat box, don't be shy. So for anyone who just joined us, okay, I'm going to give you a, a brief overview real quick. So I've talked about um, CMake and the advantages of it as a build system for C++. I'm going to update the links as I go, or the chat box as I go, so keep your eyes on that. If you want to copy anything out of that, just put the first link in. So I've introduced you to this tutorial um, here at uh, Derek Malloy at, at .ie, how to use, how to use um, CMake. It's pretty good, actually. So we've talked about that using a Hello World, very simple. Uh, what we've also talked about is uh, the ability to take your CMake project, plug it into one of your more popular uh, projects. So I'll just put these two links in I just talked about. Okay, I just updated the chat box. So I'm showing you this project here. And uh, we've talked about using this for all your major integrated development environments, Visual Studio. Uh, Xcode for Mac, Eclipse, KDevelop, um, but you can use these um, for CodeLite as well. That's my preferred IDE for Linux. All right, so that's what we talked about in CMake. Um, and again, we've also talked about these utility you can download from CMake as well, CMake.org utility. Uh, this one right here that will kind of try to build out a all the CMake files that you would need uh, to build out a, a CMake project for your preferred IDE. Okay, so we've talked about that. And then we led into running with uh, Xcode and all the projects, or sorry, frameworks that I'm using. So we talked about Redis, how it's the world's fastest probably database. Um, I think SQL Server just brought out some benchmarks, but um, as I said here, being able to run 1.2 million operations per second in a cluster is pretty phenomenal for an open source project with source code. So you can get all the information here. I'll provide that. Uh, sorry, this is off my site. And, oh, we got a question. Hayden asks, CodeLite has make CMake installed. Is this the same what you're showing or do I need to build the CMake outside of CodeLite? It's a combination of both, um, Hayden, because you have to change your um, include path and where your libraries reside. Um, I could probably show you what I mean if you like in Xcode. Okay, let me just stop for a second here. So in Xcode, and all IDEs are the same. They all have the same set of settings. So what I'm referring to with a path that you'd have to change is uh, let me just pull up here. Um, so here's the build settings for um, for uh, Xcode. So in my case, we've got two sets of paths you need to worry about. In C++, we have uh, a library path and a header path. So here we have a library search path. So I've talked about um, basically Redis and TBB, these are separate libraries. So when you build out these libraries and you want to include them into your C++ project, um, you have to tell your IDE where to find those um, libraries are. Okay, so that is one setting change you need to worry about. And you, it doesn't matter if it's Visual Studio, CodeLite, Eclipse, they're all the same. The other uh, paths you need to worry about is your header paths. And what I'm referring to, this is all standard C++ I'm showing you in a nutshell. Um, let me just see here. Uh, if I do an include path, yep, right here, I just saw it. 
Um, here, header search path. So here you have to tell I, your IDE, in this case, code uh, Xcode, where to find your um, include files. Okay, what I'm saying include files, what I'm referring to, if you look at the source code, is uh, here my main source. Up here, each one of these, when you see include dot HPP, include dot whatever header or like dot or dot h each one of those is a header file so that's how the id knows where to go because you're including them here but during the compile process when you run the compiler um, the compiler needs to know where those files are so that's where you include these headers and, and, and you add them to your search path with for the compiler hey say hi to the cat for me eh? um yeah, so that's pretty well the only changes you have to make in the CMake file um, because, uh, yeah, there's a CMake TXT file. But if you want, Hayden, we can go over that in greater detail. But some of my videos I've provided should provide that for you. And specifically, if you're really needing to understand that, uh, one of the tutorials that I've provided, um, the Hello World uh, for... Uh, where am I? Yeah, I just provided it. Just give me a second here. Yeah, there's two links I gave you uh, that will definitely help out. This one. Uh, okay, so there's this one that I've already talked about. That's for the IDE. I showed you how to, to, to integrate CMake with your IDE. So we've got here Visual Studio, Xcode. And also, um, the other uh, tutorial I'm referring to is this one, the, the Hello Make. Because when you go through this, sorry, the Hello World example, using CMake, the very basic building from scratch, this will give you a much, much better understanding how to use CMake, how to integrate it with the libraries, how to integrate it with your header files, blah, blah, blah. It goes through everything. So I I'd highly recommend you to go through that. Okay. Um, this is an amazing tutorial. So anybody who's new at this should go through this uh, web uh, this web page to understand how to build out CMake. And once you're ready with that, then you just integrate it with your um, IDE by going here to see how you integrate the CMake text file uh, with that with that IDE. But we can cover that later on. Uh, hey, no problem. Okay, so um, anybody else got any questions so far? Um, so let me just continue with the recap. No problem, Hayden. Um, as you, like I said, try to make it easy. I realize this is very overwhelming at first, but once you go through this one tutorial, the Hello World, I think this will clearly, the light will go on very quickly. Okay, this is an amazing, amazing tutorial. This will walk you through everything. This is the absolute best one I've seen. And it's a very good introduction into C++ as well. So if you're, if you're scared, this tutorial, that's why I highlighted it, uh, to go through to really get a better handle on how CMake works and get a better overview of how to integrate that with your IDE. The only challenge is in integrating it with your IDE. But if you, and I know there's two things I try to get people aligned on is using Ubuntu, using uh, the, the PyCharm IDE for Python, and then trying to get everybody on the same IDE. And I think we're trying to get everybody on CodeLite. Um, so once we get everybody on that, we'll be good to go. Okay, anybody else got any questions? Because then I can just continue blabbing on the recap. All right, so let me just go through. Okay, so we've talked about CMake in detail there, actually. Thanks again. Um, so we talked about Redis. We've talked about how it can, uh, it's in memory. Uh, it uh, can handle up to 1.2 million operations per second. You can easily, if you decide later on, go on to uh, Redis Labs as a cloud solution, as a provider for using uh, Redis in the cloud. You can definitely easily do that. Um, and I provide all the links uh, that you need. Again, I'll put all these links in a, uh, in a separate document on my Meetup, my Facebook, and my blog, so we'll keep everybody up to date. And uh, I'll also do a blast on this on my uh, emails as well. 
Uh, Hayden says, can Redis work with MongoDB? Yes, absolutely. You can run both in parallel. In fact, what will eventually, I would recommend uh, for you, Hayden, is you'd have Mongo running as one system. One system. One, one, once you get rocking and rolling with a real big system, I can envision having three separate computers that are dedicated to so have one for Mongo, have another one for Redis, and you have a separate one for all your analytics. So I envision that uh, this is a pretty sophisticated system once you get everything up and running, but it's not going to be really built out on one system. It could be, but you probably want dedicated servers for each function, one for Redis, one for, for, uh, for Mongo. So you definitely can run them in separate instances, but if, if money's tight, you can definitely run Mongo. So we have Redis running here, and if I can get my Mongo, um, I'm just, I can't remember, I haven't started Mongo in a while, so bear with me here. But you can definitely get Mongo running. So here's Mongo running. So you can definitely run Mongo and Redis together, no problem. Just depends on your, your mem memory and your system and what kind of processor it is. That's why uh, once we get to a point where we can network everything and have separate databases and separate um, dedicated systems, that'd be good. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the goal. Um, okay, so uh, let's talk about Redis. So we've talked about the performance of it. It's, it is considered one of the fastest databases on the planet. Uh, we've talked about the publisher subscriber model uh, pattern. Uh, again, um, I was talking about if you're using C++, in this case we are, using that Redox um, uh, re uh, client for Redox. Uh, so what I'm referring to is, is this one? Nope. Um, let me just find my, there we go. Yeah, so this is the Redox C++, uh, C++ compliant client we talked about. And then we talked about this example here using this uh, publisher subscriber pattern right here. So we're using this code within the project I just showed you. Okay, so it's fairly easy to understand. Just right now you're getting whacked with a ton of stuff, which I realize. But again, we can break it down later on in a couple of weeks on separate um, webinars if you'd like. All right, so knowing that, that is Redis in a nutshell. Okay, and again, I've got all kinds of demos. You can go through this section once I post it up. Uh, I've got a playlist on YouTube of about 30 plus videos of Redis. You can see its capabilities. And then we talked about Intel TBB, which is uh, Intel's threading building blocks, another open source project that is uh, sponsored by Intel. And we've talked about the pattern, the flow graph. We introduced you to the Goldman Sachs SecDB, similar in vein of how uh, Goldman Sachs uses this graph type of uh, pattern uh, to uh, maintain different algorithms and run them in parallel, which leads us to this block here. We talked in great detail with that. Um, again, you can watch all that. I've introduced you to the, uh, the tool, the designer that can help you design the, these type of workflows, I guess, using this graph flow. And then I introduce you to the code itself that we've got up for 24 hours here in Xcode. And I've run that for you against uh, my Redis instance server here. And uh, that uses the same pattern as what I've introduced you in this diagram here, where we have our market tick data come in. We have various uh, algorithms running in parallel. We do a summarization or what they call a join. And then we can make a trading decision based upon the results of these different algorithms and put on a position. And then the other one, we have another system that's very similar to this. Actually, it's a lot easier. Uh, that would close out those positions. So that's still to be done, but this is just to put on your position. And again, this it can be used in the high speed trading environment. So um, some examples I introduce you to uh, for this type of methodology is using um, MetaTrader uh, as an example here, uh, this MQL5. Uh, let me just find it. Oh, it doesn't matter. 
Okay. So here in the MetaTrader, um, we've talked about the indicators, shown you some examples that you could use as some example code uh, for these individual nodes that you can run in parallel as separate algorithms. And uh, we went over um, some, some coding examples uh, like this one. You can reverse engineer this into uh, your entire system actually and then break it out into separate algorithms. And we have this example as well as if you want to go all fancy, all mathematical, uh, where we have, some, this is a research paper, a typical quant research paper that you can download, spread volatility, volume, relationship. Um, you can have some simple algorithms here like this or if you want to get very sophisticated, you can have one algorithm. Well, not really one algorithm, but you can have multiple algorithms here. Um, or better yet, another example, a little more sophisticated, like this, something like this. But each one of these would be broken out into a separate uh, node for performance. We've already talked about that in, in detail. That's pretty well what we talked about tonight. Um, again, uh, watch the video uh, that I'm going to put up, and uh, you decide if you want to grab this or not, and uh, go from there. Anybody have any other questions? Uh, is everybody on uh, my email list or not on my email list? Uh, because I'll send out where the code's available and how to download it and how to get access to it. We've already talked about that, uh, being a Quant Leap member. Here, so we've talked about all that stuff. And I just put in my email address at feedback at quantlabs.net. If you got any questions, just get in touch with me. And uh, we'll definitely uh, try to get you aboard wherever I can help you out. Esteban, she says, could you show share the instructions for CMake? Yes, uh, Esteban, I'll be including in this document. All these links that you're referring to will be part of that document for sure. Okay, so this will this I'll make available, including this video as well, as part of the presentation. Okay, um, no problem, Esteban. Anybody else got any questions or concerns? We're up to uh, almost two hours uh, with this with this present presentation tonight. I don't mind talking. Anybody got any specifics? Uh, they'd like to ant to question. Uh, anybody have any questions regarding automated trading or what I've been teaching or anything related on trading? I can. Open it up to those topics if you like. Anybody got any criticisms? I'm open to that too. I'll try to address any concerns you may have. No? Not at all. Anybody? Questions? Is this too technical? I imagine this is pretty technical for a lot of people. He asked, no doubt I have more, but I will speak on this outside of this. Okay, yeah, no problem, Hayden. And I encourage people to do that because um, definitely I realize a lot of people may struggle with what I'm presenting. Um, there's there's a few people on here that I help one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I've got a, a tutorial video I put out, a recording session on my YouTube channel. So I do that to help other people and I know that those videos do help people out. That's the whole point of why I do this. Um, but again, uh, I just want to stress that, I'm, I mean, outside of my group, I won't be maintaining this uh, beyond a couple of months. I'll be removing all the code and moving into that uh, new service uh, I'm, I talked about earlier about going into a data analytics service. Less technical, more, more active for real traders. Hayden says it's technical, but it is a challenge with the objective of under the hood systems. Yeah. Um, I did mention Quantopia and Quant Connect. Nothing against those systems or those plat or those um, uh, services. I think they're really good when you're beginning. Here's a problem with them: is there's two problems actually. When you put up your intellectual property of your algorithm that you may work in, you conform to their API. Yes, they provide you all the plumbing, which includes the database, all that stuff. Um, and all you really need to worry about is the algorithm. And that's how you want to build out your system or your, your algorithm and make money from them. That's fine. Um, but here's the problem is that you're not going to get the whole thing that you get with what I offer 
And the other thing is um, with quantopium, they say they don't do it. I can't guarantee it. I don't know, and I'm not going to get into it. But you are submitting your um, algorithm to them. So you're taking your source code that, again, conforms to their API, and you're putting it on their server. So there could be other people out there. I'm not saying they do or don't. But it's something to consider is that it enables them, I'm not saying they do it, but I know other operations that have done it where they take that code and basically lift it and claim it as their own. And they may not, I don't think they'd share it, but it just puts you at a disadvantage. And that's why a lot of these um, HFT shops and other shops are very secretive. It's like a Rentech, a Ren Renaissance technology. We don't even know what they do. I can surmise, but uh, that's why they're secretive because of that intellectual property and the amount of investment. But here, you're getting everything. You're getting the database, showing you how to do that, visualization, all that I, I provide for you. Hayden asks a question. Question the algo course is going on or is going for a while. Um, this is not a jeopardy with your move into data analytics service. No, it's not. Um, what I'm doing, Hayden, is um, I'll be still talking about it. It's just I'm not gonna put it out there in public in the public forum anymore. Um, it's just it's too proprietary. I mean I have people paying Quite a, not a lot of money, but probably a lot of money to them. And I try to get them up to speed. I mean, it is about them. And more people that join, the better. We do have people that do drop off because it is complicated. And that's why I'm doing the data analytics service. But there are those that want to understand, as, as Hayden says, under the hood, uh, understanding everything up from end to end and building out these trading systems. But now we have another methodology to get you kind of close to not true HFT, but with the multi, multi-threading on top of the, the internal in-memory database with the Redis as well. So James says, agree, but you can run the entire engines locally as well as on the cloud, much better. Yes, uh, James, just so you know about cloud technology. Um, if you go to Amazon, there's the public cloud. A lot of people don't know this. Is if you put up videos using their AWS service, you're exposing your videos through the Amazon service. You're really not getting your 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 your, prod, your, your source code locked down because it's now on a public cloud, which means I don't know if it can be hacked. But that's why there's private cloud and public cloud. The private cloud is yeah, it's cloud technology, but you own that technology and only you own it, and nobody else has access to it. Jeff asks, uh, just starting. The indie Python course, like drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> You're more focused now on C++ now. Are you shifting from Python or is Python still important going forward? Yeah, I, I just put up a video on that. If you want, I can give you that video link. Um, I kind of addressed that because it's already been asked a few times. Um, but uh, I'll give you that link. Um, if you go to my channel on Quant Labs, uh, well... And yeah, here I'm going to show hey myself there. up. Okay, so I've, I've got, that's that's my YouTube channel, my chat box. But here is, I've got under uploads, which is the most recent, right here, this video here. I just put this up this morning, and I've got 30 views already. There's a big interest here to answer this question. When to use C++ versus Python in high-speed automated trading with an algo? Okay, so to answer the, your question, Jeff, you watch this video in detail if you want. But um, to answer it in a nutshell, the C++ that I'm showing tonight is uh, no problem, Jeff, and that's for anybody else. This, this is for high-speed trading. This is for real-time trading. This is for those that don't want to trade off tick, okay, intraday trading. The Python, as I mentioned earlier, is specifically for... Well, I like to call the name risk assessment. Um, assessing uh, data before you put on a position. There's different ways to do it. What I just shown here is one methodology by building a set of algorithms that you run in parallel, <clears throat> like here, and then you, you, you have a trading decision collectively at the end to put on a trading position. That's one way to do it using C++. Another way is using Python, which I've shown the courses that you've mentioned, that is more for long-term trading, meaning end-of-day trading, meaning 
uh, trading over a week, over maybe a day or an overnight or over a month. That's where the Python comes in. And the big advantage with Python, as I said earlier, it brings the convenience where what it could take me a couple hundred lines in in uh, C++ or may not even be able to do it in C++, but I could do it in Python. And the thing is, it's really important, is that we're using our databases like this Redis as our central repository of the data. Our trading decisions will get stored here. I'll show that in the future. And because of that, we're using the database and specifically using Redis as a methodology to use and put it on a message queue so we can pass messages between your program, like here in the C++, like here at the bottom right here, where I'm passaging messages and I'm pushing data, requesting data into Redis, and I'm going to have other scripts, may it be in Python or C++ or C or Java, and, 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 and communicate with Python, or sorry, communicate with the Redis. So yes, Python is being used, but for the reasons I specified earlier for um, the convenience of the coding, but where the C++ is really handy is for when you want to trade off tick or have a really high speed a trading engine uh, or a trading execution engine. But I don't plan to build anything like that for quite a while. We're talking a year, two years down the line. Because I've shown in this code here, um, in, uh, where's that? Uh, I'll show you how to get there. Okay, if you go to my blog, I'll show you the course overview that, that uh, we're talking about here. So if you go to quantlabs.net uh, slash blog, uh, here, um, what I've got here is I've got uh, a little link here, Algo Trading Biz, click here, and this will take you to the overview of the course. So what I'm referring to here, as I said earlier, is the Python coding uh, phases. Uh, as I said, the first one is all the components to build out a trading system, and then the strategy of the equity, pair trading, and all that. So that's that's all fine and good. Um, James, introducing, um, if you're interested in the Python, you can check out QS Trader. Yeah, I, I haven't checked out QS Trader, uh, James. I haven't um, really looked into it. Um, I think that's, again, another reason why I'm kind of getting out, because there's all these different... Um, open source trading platforms out there. There's been, there's been a, quite a few out there, um, and it kind of gets overwhelming for people. And Quant Quant starts another good resource um, for building out uh, trading platforms. But again, you're going to have all kinds of issues when it comes to Python itself. Um, if you're just trading overnight, holding a position for a week, a month, you're fine. You're good to go. But you will run into challenges when you want to trade uh, intraday. And that's why this project that I'm introducing is being highlighted tonight. Because this can be all the way down to, really, you could trade off of a tick. And that's the advantages you get with this. But when you get platforms like um, QS Trader, I haven't checked it out. There's lots of books out there I can give you, done in Python, that give you all the components of building out trading systems in Python. Um, and they're very sophisticated. Uh, the one I've, I've introduced is fairly simple. Uh, all the code is very simple. It's just one script, basically, maybe seven scripts, and that's an entire system. And the idea is to have all your data, as I said, stored in some form of a database, be it a MongoDB, or in our case, here in Redis. So there's different approaches. Um, and uh, I haven't really checked out QS Trader, and uh, I think it's, a, it's probably pretty good. Um, but I'm sure there's going to be some caveats that come with it. But here, uh, I try to keep stuff simple. Um, and if, let's say this is using object-oriented programming, it's very confusing. And I mentioned this before. People need to really understand that scripting languages like MATLAB are, and Python are just that, interpreted scripting languages. And I've seen some crazy things where people do object-oriented programming in Python, and I don't think Python's really meant to be built like that. It gets really messy, really hard to maintain, and pretty tough to debug. Uh, it's something I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go down that path. Um, and that's why I prefer to, to focus on something like C++, where it's designed for multi-threading, 
where when you start to get into Python and start to try to do multi-threading and start to do object-oriented, it gets crazy and it's really hard to maintain the code and really hard to um, debug it. Again, I don't think Python's really built for that. I've seen some really bizarre stuff done with Python. Some of it's done really ingeniously, but you will run into uh, speed issues. Uh, no matter how, how much tricks and whatever you throw at it, uh, Python is, is still... Um, it just, you're just complicating the problem and uh, things that should be considered. Whereas what I'm building here is just simple scripts. We've got a script that generates a chart. That's it. We have another script that will download data from Yahoo and put it into a database. We've got a script that does that. You can run those in the background, put them into your database, and then run other scripts that will run and process from against the database because all that data is now in your database. And we're using, as I said, Mongo and Redis. Okay, and hopefully I'll give you a better insight from my view on how I would approach it. Uh, anybody else got any questions? Two hours. I can go for three hours. Uh, anybody else got any questions, concerns, comments? Uh, Want to throw me uh, some uh, poison darts my way? Uh, let me know. This is what it's about. It's, we're here to talk and uh, talk about any trading related, automated trading. And don't be shy. I'll be doing more of these uh, coming up. Um, but I've just been at the same time so-called taking a break from the... Uh, um, the course stuff because it is pretty uh, time consuming to prepare it and I mean everything's prepared and at the same time I'm researching the C++ stuff and on top of building a trading system as well so you can imagine I'm pretty overwhelmed and um, <clears throat> starting up that futures and options courses I've talked about here uh, a few um, uh, in the next probably within two weeks for sure and we'll do it on uh, Monday nights we got some people aboard uh, already um, that are part of that, and uh, thanks to them and other people, uh, I'm able to exist today because of them. So big thanks to them. Uh, anybody else got any questions, concerns? We got twelve of you. Um, I don't mind uh, anybody. Don't be shy now. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, let me know. Uh, does anybody need any help in anything when it comes to trading or automated trading? Okay, so what I'm going to do, if not, I'll give you my email address. Um, again, uh, hopefully everyone, oh, everyone understands the next steps if you want the code. Uh, I'll make the code available tonight for that 24-hour period, uh, probably the next uh, couple hours. And uh, we, we, we can go from there. Uh, if you got any questions or concerns, let me know. And um, yeah, I give me my email at feedback at quantlabs.net. I'll make this avail a video available online on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you are on my uh, meetup group, I'll send you an email later tonight, as well as everybody else that's in my meetups. Um, we've done a couple of recaps already, what was presented tonight uh, with the links. I'll provide those as well. And uh, we'll go from there. So... Uh, Unless anyone has got any questions, uh, we can call it a night, and we'll do something next week. Um, let me put a poll out there. How many of you, so we have 12 people. I, I want to put out a posting. No problem, Esteban. Uh, a quick poll. How many of you are actually use, um, users of Windows, and specifically your IDE, your integrated development environment, is Visual Studio? Just give me a yes so I know what kind of... Uh, okay, James. Anybody else using Visual Studio? Robert. Okay. Anybody else using Vitaly? That's quite. A, that's quite a few. Wow. Almost half. Oh, yeah. I'd say it. Uh, so we got half of you. Anybody else that hasn't said yes? So that's a good half. Hmm. Okay. Now. Yes, James. I agree. Uh, I love. I hate Windows, but love my Visual Studio. Uh, I tried playing with VS Code and uh, thought that would be a little help, but it, well, it didn't help me out. Um, okay, so let me show you that uh, important uh, tutorial. Uh, as I said, um, getting close. Uh, no, let me 
just go to my checklist here. I'll check with you, Hayden. Hang on for a second. Um, okay, I am looking for this one. Okay, so we talked about CMake. I want you to remember this link right here. I'm just putting in the chat box. This has a tutorial showing you how to um, use Visual Studio with CMake right here. Okay, this is CMake on Visual Studio. You can see it's pretty pretty involved. Boo. <laughs> All right, but I'll I'll make a combination if I can. Okay. Um, now Hayden had a question. We'll got to go, Brian. Speak later. Looking forward to downloading the code. Could switch, but developed uh, in Ubuntu. Yes. As I said, we try to get everyone to switch to Ubuntu with uh, preferably Xcode. It's much easier. And most of these systems are built on Linux and eventually a free BSD anyways. So, uh, thanks, uh, Hayden. Uh, yeah. So, um, anybody else got any questions? Like I said, I'll make this video available tonight. Yeah, uh, I understand. Uh, everybody's going to probably drop off now. It's already been two hours. Uh I can, I can continue and stay on line, no problem. Uh, and again, I'll make this vi video available and I'll put up an a email link to the video and the code and when it's available and how to get it. Anybody else got any questions so far? I know we just got Michael joined us. Thanks. How you doing? Anybody else coming aboard? Uh, okay, I'll put a last call out for questions or comments, questions, anything. I'll do it going once, two, three times. If not, we'll give it a wrap for tonight. Um, Jeff asked, should we copy you and do Mac instead of Ubuntu? Um, no, uh, Jeff, if you have Xcode and Mac, all the power to you, I'm the same. Uh, that's why I'm introducing CMake because I'm trying to find an inner, a universal way to get the code distributed to everybody that decides to go this path. That's the idea of CMake. That would include um, uh, Visual Studio as well for Windows. It's the hope of what I'm trying to do. So Jeff asks, yeah, he's starting out. Um, let me just see where we're at with the uh, with the Xcode. Or sorry, with the uh, Visual Studio C++, because Visual Studio does support pure C++ for both Linux. So you may be okay there. If you're wanting to use Python, you want a free tutorial, a free, a free IDE, um, I would definitely recommend PyCharm. Uh, I'll give you that link here. Just give me a second. That's what we've been using. We have uh, used um, we have used Anaconda with a, a Spider 2, which is okay, but it's got kind of quite a lot of um, bugs in it. And I uh, just recently made the switch over. But these are all free, whatever you choose for PyCharm. And the other thing is with PyCharm, uh, it's, it's universal again. Uh, let me just pull up the link here. And uh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty decent uh, IDE. So I'll give you that link uh, for that IDE. That's cross-platform, as long as you have Python installed. Um, Hayden asks, Hayden Code Lite, Python 2.17, PyCharm, MongoDB as the IDE environment. This is correct, Hayden. That's what we're working on right now. Um, my tutorials I've got that um, we've highlighted is staying in Python 2.711. Um, I know there's a eventual move to uh, Python 3x. Um, the problem is as you move into that, all the scripts that I got break. But, or they may, they shouldn't break. I'm using all the popular um, packages, but there probably will be some problems as they, um, I'll probably make that shift probably in the next few months, um, but we can worry about that then. But for now, as Hayden says, 2.7, 2.711 for Python is what you want with PyCharm, Mongo, DB as the database, a uh, code light uh, for your C++ on Ubuntu. That's the preferred IDE. Um, but uh, moving forward, because uh, I, I just proved myself, we've got half of you on Visual Studio. So that's a good poll. Thanks for, for the input. Um, so let me figure it out. I'll put out some videos and we'll figure all that out. James says it's 2 a.m. Um, I see you're in Europe too, uh, James. Or, well, you're at least six hours away. Appreciate you all hanging out. Uh, there's a lot of dedicated people here. Uh, I'm really blown away by it. Uh, anybody else? 
Thanks again. I think that's the key to success, just being that dedicated, having that motivation. That's the key. Don't like to promote these uh, overnight uh, infomercials. It's, a, it's not tough, but there's a lot of positive outcome that can come out of this when you have control of your own environment. So anybody else got any questions? Hayden says it's 2 a.m. as well. So I guess both James and Hayden are both in the UK. Thanks again, guys, for joining us. Um, we'll start up everything uh, and maybe let me know what we could do uh, our times earlier, maybe at 7 o'clock instead of 8 o'clock, um, uh, when, when, once we kick off our uh, positions and options strategy course. All right, so anybody else out there got any questions or concerns? Remember, the video will be up, so you can watch the later part of this if you need to. Anybody else? Questions, concerns? Okay, I'll do it going once, twice, three times. If not, we'll give it a wrap. I'll put up the video and I'll send out an email blast how to get the code. I'll also in that same email, I'll put up the link of where you can get this video playback. Okay, so I'll do it going once, twice, three times. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jay Hayden, and anybody else out there that's been um, online. So, yeah, uh, I'll do it going once, twice, three times. And hopefully... Uh, We'll see you, as I say, on the other side of that membership. Okay, if you got a question, just give me a uh, last chance. Going once, uh, going twice, going two and a half, two and a quarter, two and fifth tenths, two and seven three quarters, two and nine tenths, three, going three times. Nobody's got questions. Okay. All right, so I'll give it a wrap for tonight, everybody. Uh, thanks again. I hope kind of under see the vision of where this is going uh, if you got any questions again I'm at feedback at uh, quantlabs.net please watch this video over the next 24 hours because it will disappear all right okay so I'll talk to you guys soon and again I hope I'll see you soon on another meetup thanks again and uh, sayonara and have a good night and uh, I think I'm gonna watch the Democrat convention now all right. Okay, guys. Thanks again, and have a good one. Later.